In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use ASP.NET MVC6 Entity Framework to connect to an Azure database. Um, this particular style is using the database first, which means I already have the database built and existed and populated online. Um, the other option is to use code first, and I've done that in a separate video. So my database is built. Um, I'm using the Henry Books database from Philip Pratt's Guide to SQL. So if I take a look at what's in here, I got some authors, Tony Morrison, Paul Salteroff. Um, so I start from book. I've got some books, Deepness of Sky, Magic Terror of the Sky of the Stranger. And this is running off my Azure database. So I built a standard MVC ASP.NET 6 product. Um, before I get moving on this, I need to install some new Git technologies. There's three that we need. So go to Tools, New Git Package Manager, Manage New Git Packages. And I'm installed three. We're going over to Browse. And we'll look for Microsoft to Visual Studio. Dot web, dot code generation, dot design. There it is. Click on it. Over the right hand side of the screen, you see your project and what's installed. You see the version. Pick the version that matches what you have. I'm using versions most recent six, so I'm a six six point oh two. Check on project, hit install. Hit OK and say yes when it pops up. Let it chug. We're gonna do this two more times for Microsoft Entity Framework Core Tools and Microsoft Entity Framework Core SQL Server. So Microsoft Entity Framework Core SQL Server. Install. And any Microsoft Entity Framework Core Tools. If you get an error in this process, that means your version doesn't match. So go back and figure out what version you're using and install the proper version. I'll take a look at updates or installed, I have these three installed. So I'm good. Okay, so now I need to go to Azure and get at my connection string. Where it was. Where you get this from is you go to your SQL databases, you go to your database, and then you connect on c show connection strings. The one you're going to want to use is the ADO one that pops up. So Go to there, copy it. Notice your password is currently cur blocked out with curly braces. When you go to edit this, you're going to have to put that in. Also, this is um, the ID you don't want to use. You want to use a, a weaker account than that. OK, so we have that. And we copied it and we put that into our notepad or clipboard or somewhere. So now we're going to reverse engineer this product. So we're going to go back to Tools, we're going to go down to NuGet Package Manager, we're going to pick the Package Manager Console. Okay, we're going to put in a line of code that starts with scaffold-db-context. It's then going to be a quote. I'm going to build this in a document so you can see it. Start with scaffold, scaffold DB context. You're then going to put inside a quote your connection string. And this is all one line. And then what's going to follow that is at least this. And again, all one line. When you put your connection string in that you got from Azure, uh, make sure you change it and put your password in. Um, and don't use the curly braces around it. Okay, so I'm going to do this a little bit off screen, so maybe I can pretend. 
check my data a little bit. And it will part. Say build started. And it should say build success. And you'll get up with this screen, build started, build succeeded. And it's warning you about, you need to move your connection string. That is true, we need to move our connection string. I'll show you how to do that. Um, in that model that we just ran, you can also add in choices like minus minus table and list the table. You can include views here, but views don't always work as we would expect. So you can pick and choose what table. That's really helpful if you're using one Azure database with you know 20 or 30 tables and you only want two or three, you can specify them there. Okay, so at this point, it'll run. But we need to protect our connection string. To do so, we come down here to our on configure, and I'm in this new model is built for me. This something's wrong. Why is it already there? You know why it's already there? Because I ran the update. That's right. This is not wrong. Correct. So all these models are built for us, and these come from my tables. And then I'm going to look at this file. This is my con this is my context. The context is how you connect to the database. So this has to go away. I'd recommend copying your connection string and then delete this entire unconfiguring. And put that into a notepad document somewhere. Also, you need to make sure that this constructor is there, this one with DB context. Um, we're going to use that here in a moment to pass the data in. Okay, so now we're going to go to our program CS. If you've worked with older versions of Visual Studio and Entity Framework, this was startup.cs. So if you come across online, they're telling you about startup, it's program now. So we're going to add in two usings. First be the name of a project, so using, in my case, EF database first. Models. And then we're going to add in Microsoft Entity Framework Core. So these will both be used here in a moment. Alright, so this document holds all the middleware that Entity Framework currently uses. And we're going to add our stuff here, line 8 ish, right after the last builder.services. You can do Varcon your connection string. You want to add DB context. The name of that context will always be the name of the database context. And then we're going to want to pass in your options. We use this lambda. connection string equal con. No. Sorry, it's an old school. Use SQL Server passing con. With this, when we run it, it's going to be able to connect the database. And since this program CS is hidden, it's harder to reverse engineer. It's not impossible, but harder. Um, there are other ways to protect this. You can obfuscate your data, you can move into DLLs, but uh, you do need to protect this. I'm going to put my real connection string in here, and then I'm going to run the project. I'm running just to make sure it doesn't die. 
Oh, I've got an error. Where? Oh, I'm missing it in that builder line. Try it again. Good, it's running. Awesome. It doesn't do anything yet, but it's running. Okay, so now we need to get CRUD operations working. Create, read, update, delete. This is easy. Seriously easy. We're going to build a couple of these. We're going to build the ones we care about. So go back here to my Solution Explorer. Right-click my controllers. I add a new controller. I'm going to pick MVC controller views using Entity Framework. This is going to give us CRUD tables for or CRUD fields for whichever table we pick. Create CRUD, of course, is create, read, update, and delete. So I'm going to pick that. I'm going to to the drop. I'm going to start with book. And you have to pick the data context, and that connects to the database. The layout by default should run with its standard view start. Hit add, and then just wait. This is generating a whole bunch of lines of code for us, including a bunch of working CSHTML pages. Um, you'll do the same thing for every page that you wish or every table you wish to connect to. See what it's given us. So we take a look at views. We now have a books folder, and we have create, delete, details, edit, index. Um, if this gives you errors, if this craps out on you, and you go, something about a nullable interface, you'll find that in here. You might find like a question mark in front of this. Um, if you're getting a nullable error, get rid of that question mark. Alright, so we build another controller, this one for my author. So I'll pick author this time. The second runs a little quicker. Almost there. Let's see what it, once this is done, we'll run it and see what it did for us. Okay, let's run it. Remember how the routing works? We need the folder. Book slash index. Uh, is it books as opposed to book? There we go. Look at that. And if you want to change one of these things, it usually look prettier than this. Create a deepness in the ocean. And now I'm going to go back to SQL Server. Right straight directly into the database. All right, so you've seen how to generate uh, connection to the database, database first. You've seen how to create views and the controllers for this. You've also seen how to protect your connection string. Um, you guys can spend the time make that form look pretty. It usually looks prettier. I must have done something silly here. Well, thanks for watching. And good luck.